Uh, good morning and uh, welcome to my home, or really my, my toy room. Uh, my name is uh, Bill Shea, and I'm happy to participate in a uh, series of uh, seminars uh, that uh, will be known as uh, Knowledge Share Seminars. Uh, the seminar today is going to deal with a uh, topic that is uh, near and dear to my heart, and that is the subject of uh, German helmets uh, manufactured between the time frame of uh, 1916 uh, during the course of World War I and 1945, which is the, the end of uh, World War II. Uh, and, uh, but before we begin, um, I'd like to know, get an assessment from you of where your knowledge level is as it pertains to uh, this topic. So um, with uh, a show of hands, if I could see, um, if I were to ask you what your knowledge level is on the subject of a German helmet uh, during the time frame we're talking about, and um, zero being absolutely no knowledge whatsoever, and 10 being, you should be up here and doing the seminar versus me, uh, you're going to let me know, okay? So if I were to say uh, zero being no knowledge whatsoever, 10 being everything there is to know, and then some. How many would say their knowledge level was zero? Okay, so we have one truthful person. Uh, and how about uh, one or two? All right, so we have uh, some level. How about three or four? And nine to 10? Okay, I'll put my hand up. Okay, uh, so, uh, and, and I'm hoping by the end of the day that you'll also agree that that's where my... Uh, my knowledge level uh, lies in the, uh, in the high degree and that uh, you come away with some ideas. The object of this seminar is not to teach you everything and anything there is to know about the German helmet. It is to give you an overview regarding the development of the helmet and the changes that it went through and how it was meant to accommodate what was going on during the time period. Uh, and many, many factors go into that. It is not to make you an expert. It is not to make you raise your hand and say, now I'm a 10. Uh, it is to uh, help you have an understanding of a very, very important piece of uh, headgear in the 20th century uh, and to go from the information that I give you and seek out additional information from the resources that are available, not only through the uh, Wilson History and Research Center, but also a number of other uh, online forums and reference books and material that's out there, uh, interacting with other individuals who uh, know a lot about this topic. Uh, so I hope that you'll come away today with an, an idea of uh, what the German helmet is and some of the major uh, and main changes that it underwent between uh, this time period of uh, 1916 to 1945. But to understand more about uh, why I uh, know a lot about uh, helmets and uh, have made them uh, an integral part of my collection, you have to know a little bit about me, okay? Uh, as I told you, my name is Bill Shea, and I am really a collectorholic. Uh, my parents often scratched their heads and wondered uh, where I came from because I was doing things that they never did when they were kids and uh, collecting uh, anything from... Oh, comic books and coins, and I was always wheeling and dealing and trying to get uh, uh, more of a, of a collection. Uh, and so I always had an affinity to this very, very day of, of collecting. But um, there was an occasion in my life, I was in the eighth grade, that would be 1959, happens to be 50 years ago, so it gives you a perspective of how long I've been collecting uh, German militaria. Uh, and we were playing in a garage of uh, a friend, uh, and uh, uh, this friend was a classmate of mine, and his uh, dad had been in World War II, and like so many other GIs, uh, had served his country honorably and had come home at the end of World War II with some souvenirs. And we were rummaging around in the garage, and there was uh, the uh, cigar box. And inside the cigar box were all these medals and badges. And I looked and I saw that uh, symbol uh, that I knew from all the movies and from uh, talking to GIs and the newsreels and all. Um, 
that was a swastika. And here are all these medals and badges. I had no idea what they were. But of course, I was fixated on the fact that uh, these were German items from World War II, souvenirs. You know. And a light went on, and I said, ooh, I'd like to collect these things too. So among them, who knows? There might have been extremely rare knight's crosses and German crosses and things that are worth countless thousand dollars. But I happened to fixate on one little item, and it happens to be related to uh, the goals of the uh, Wilson uh, History and Research Center, and that's headgear. Uh, and it happened to be uh, this little German eagle. And it's made of a zinc material, uh, and it is uh, the uh, uh, eagle that would come off of a visor cap, and uh, it happens to be made of uh, zinc with virtually no finish left on it. And I said to myself, this is Hitler's. There was no doubt in my mind that this happened, had to be Hitler's because, of course, I'd never seen another one. So uh, I quickly decided that it, I wanted it to be mine uh, and said to the uh, fellow, um, uh, I want that. How much is it? He said, well, I, I don't know. He said, it belongs to my dad. He says, uh, he'll kill me if it's missing. I said, he's not even going to miss it. It's sitting there in the cigar box. And come on. He said, well, I don't know. And I said, uh, I'll give you five bucks for it. And he said, five bucks? And I said, a whole week on the paper route, by the way, in 1959. And uh, he uh, figured five bucks is a lot of money. And uh, so he ended up uh, giving me the eagle. And here it is right now. Anybody want to buy it? No chance of that. This is what launched the ship. So um, on occasion, what I will do as I'm showing you uh, the helmets, uh, I will uh, pass one around and uh, so you can have the feel, uh, not only the feel of uh, the texture it's made of, but also um, the weight of the helmet and some of the components that I'll be describing to you. And uh, so I'm going to pass this eagle around, but I am going to keep my eyes on you. <laughs> And uh, anybody want to speculate what something like that's worth now? And I'm not going to do this again. One of the goals that we're talking about here is not value, what uh, monetary value things are worth. So uh, there's not going to be an occasion when I'm going to say uh, this is worth because we're talking extrinsic and intrinsic here. And to me today, these things are all uh, have intrinsic value. But anybody want to speculate what that $5 investment that I made back in 1959 would bring today? It's worth about 15 bucks. <laughs> I have about 500 of them in stock, by the way. So, uh, so it's, it's interesting that I kind of set you up for that in a certain way. Uh, but, uh, uh, but intrinsically, it has, it's priceless. It means the absolute world to me because it actually launched the ship. And, uh, and I, the ship hasn't slowed down. In fact, the ship uh, is probably still going full speed ahead.